Well, activists across northern Nigeria continue with their protest against the prevalence of insecurity in the region. They are saying enough is enough, no more bloodshed. Like the 8th Assembly, Senate steps down a bill meant to create equal opportunities for both the male and female gender in the country. Is this a female gender discriminated or is the female gender discriminated in Nigeria? And we will be reviewing the dailies with an analyst. Well, many thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. And I am Messi Boko. It's good to have you join us this morning. And as always, we'll be beginning uh, with uh, Top Trending, which is basically, you know, what is uh, topical and what is making around across uh, various uh, social media platforms and various uh, spaces. And uh, we will start with one thing uh, that, uh, you know, Nigerians, uh, you know, asked for sometime last year uh, during the NSAS protest, uh, which uh, was... Uh, you know, the increment in pay for the police um, officers, you know, that's one of the fallout of the NSAS protest. Well, just yesterday, the Federal Executive Council meeting, FEC, you know, approved uh, a 20% uh, raise for police officers in Nigeria, which should actually start sometime next year. Mercy, over time, there has been so much talk about uh, police officers in Nigeria not really getting, you know, enough pay. Uh, we've seen and heard reports of where they even have to, you know, pay and phone for their uniforms, uh, bullets, and a whole lot of it. And most times, uh, people have actually attributed the fact that um, they go uh, the roads to the roads and, uh, you know, ask for all, for all sort of bribes, uh, extortion, because they don't really get so much. Um, when it comes to welfare, uh, it is really nothing to write home about. What do you see, uh, how do you see this particular development? Well, very welcome. But, you know, I would like to understand, you know, the 20 percent. What is 20 percent now? And we want to work with figures. And usually with some of those policies, you ask yourself, do they also, I mean, before you have all of this increment being made, uh, do we look at the current realities of the country? You know, because it's okay to say uh, you're making 20 percent increase. What are they actually earning uh, depending on what grades and level, if that's the structure that's been used. Right. So, yes, it's actually welcome, very welcome, but very serious. And as usual, and with the entire, you know, workforce in Nigeria, there's some basic things that can be provided for that would not necessarily see. The Nigerian police is not properly taken care of. No, I'll aren't. say that and I'll say that again. Now, let's not even, you know, sometimes as much as we say that the Nigerian police, uh, you know, the, the police is not your friend, they're not very friendly, they are under, uh, they are underfunded. Welfare is, it's nothing to write home about. I'm saying that from first-hand experience. I have gone to the barracks where they leave. I have actually gone to the, there was a time I saw, um, you know, police station using lantern. You know that? You, you <laughs> Some people call it a thunder. They were using like, I was surprised. I was thinking it work. You know, it wasn't in this part of the country, but you know, some other part. And in my mind, I'm like, we don't even use that in my house. It's bad. How can the police station be using that? See, so there was also another time, you know, where I was supposed to follow a report. Uh, they don't even, I mean, some of them don't even have where to stay. So they were at properly staying where you have uh, like canteen, maybe some kind of place that decided to create a space where they're supposed to stay. Like I, I was having this conversation this morning uh, while I was on my way to work and I said, if we take care of the Nigerian police force, I'm not saying that we're going to expect a perfect system, but maybe all of this, sometimes you need to excuse them. I'm not making an excuse for, you know, all of the extortion, but to be very realistic, they're not properly taken care of. You can see some, it shows, you know, the uniform that they wear, uh, they not entirely, have, they not everyone, for, you know. You know. Just looking at them, you will know that they're not properly funded. And I wish that we can understand uh, the dynamics surrounding all of this, that if you take care of the hand that lays the golden hand, then you are going to expect, you know, a high productivity. Hmm. We're not going to say, as long as we're human beings, of course, we'll always return to def uh, default setting. But my point is, we probably might not have a perfect entire police system because there's none in the entire world. But we'll probably just be there somewhere where 
you know, everyone will be proud to be part of the police force. I mean, just go to the street and ask a kid if they want to be a police officer in Nigeria. They'll tell you no. So there are a lot of things. It's, it's a welcome development, first of all. But like I would, I would want to say, I, don't, I really don't know how much that 20% would translate into. Uh, and mm. do we also consider, because apart from that, if we take care of, you know, health care, we also take care of, you know, housing, we take care of all the little, little stuff around. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the salary entirely would not even be a problem. And also, uh, should we always consider the reality? We're looking at, you know, the cost of goods and services across the inflation. It's something else entirely. So, yes, as much as we applaud, we also hope that we can do better. The entire police force needs a total restructuring, you mm. know, needs a reform. We need to really pay attention to the welfare. We also need to look at the issue of corruption, where those who are highly placed would always, you know, take advantage of the resources. The mean resources, because resources would never be enough. As mm. a matter of fact, I've never had any country or any department or organization mm. that would say they have enough. Nobody has No enough. one ever has enough. Mm. You know, even in the Nigerian police, uh, you know, it is, uh, like you have said, uh, a step in the right direction, like uh, you mentioned. But over time, we still need to look at other issues. You know, I have to give kudos to some states like Lagos, you know, for establishing their own uh, security trust fund, which has over time, you know, helped, uh, you know, uh, take care of some, you know, lapses and some lacuna in the Niger police force. You know, over time, you find out that when you call for uh, the police, you know, in terms of um, emergencies, they either tell you they don't even have fuel, they'll tell you they don't even, uh, their cars are bad. No, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a whole lot. It's a bummer, really. It's a whole lot. But uh, what the establishment of the state Security Trust Fund, uh, you know, where are uh, different donors, uh, including the state government, you know, you know, fund that particular um, trust. Uh, over time, we've seen uh, issues of policing getting better. I can only speak for Lagos State, you know, but so I just think uh, other states should actually, you know, borrow a leaf from there because uh, they, they can't just uh, totally depend, you know, on the federal government. And that still brings back to the issue of uh, state policing. Uh, would they even get better funded if uh, uh, the policing uh, uh, issue exactly left to the hands of um, the state government. You know, at the end of the day, if we, if we get back to, uh, despite the fact that there are several arguments surrounding state policing, oh, mm. the governors would actually be in control, and then they would use that to begin to intimidate and bully, you know, people. But you see, we need to give it a try. Yeah. I'm thinking that if we get to a point where we decentralize, uh, you know, powers, and states are able to, you know, states come to a point where they are able to... Um, generate revenue. I mean, look at the resources. Let's talk about mine, uh, gold. I mean, you know, some of this mineral resources, you know, they do not have, as long as it's within, you know, the poor view, they cannot. Mm. So, I, I, like I, we would always say, it, it's important that we, we consider it. Let's get back to that point mm. where if states are able, I'm saying, because at the end of the day, it's more like a competition. You need to look out for your own. Mm -hmm. And so you begin to look at, the, 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 they call it the comparative advantage, what are your strengths as states? Because states are differently endowed, just True. as you have, you know, the different worlds and all of the, um, you know, endowment and what have you. So each state will begin to look at themselves. I think that if we get to the point where, you know, state policing becomes a case, state governors will be able to cater for. Okay. And let's not also forget the fact that we're still talking about over 211 million population. How many personnel do we have? 400? Was it talking about 400,000 no, police officers? Police about that, state. you know, policing yeah. over 200, it doesn't even add up. There's a, a lot of work that we need to do. It is much. Well, let's move away from the Nigerian police. Congratulations to them in advance, as it were. Uh, staying in Lagos here, uh, some cheering news. Uh, we've uh, been hearing about that now for some uh, time, since last week, actually. Uh, Lagos arrested. Mercy, where do you <laughs> stay? How much do you pay as some um, rent? I don't know if you pay through your nose are because you, I, I know you are a so big island babe. So <laughs> <laughs> I live in Vigency. You don't want to know how much you, the uh, rent. You, I can, that is where you I'm don't headed. Want, that is where you don't I'm want to know, You don't want to know how much you know the rent. So it will be some I sort of a relief if you get to be paying your, no, your rent. No, it would not monthly. be a relief. No, oh, okay. It would not be a relief. It wouldn't. You know, I, I totally understand what the Lagos State Government is trying okay. to achieve and the governor himself. Mm. We applaud it. Mm. But you see... Mercy, you drop it. Yelly. <laughs> no, let, let's be realistic. Just okay, I'm let's be realistic. Let's look at let's put on the cards on the table. Okay. Now it's a good thing. It, it's okay to say because this idea is not that we are originally the owners of this idea. I mean it's something that's practiced in developed countries. That's how it's done. Okay. If you pay one year, you, <laughs> the, 
No, but the landlord the actually owes you. The, the, <laughs> you can, yes, but, but the point is, we yes. do not live in a climate where now a lot of persons are not um, a source of income. As much as you see what the country is going through, a lot of persons still have a challenge of depending on one source of, you know, uh, one source of livelihood. Mm. So a lot of people are dependent on salary. A lot of people. Mm -hmm. Now, just a few persons that would have extras, right? Yes. So you will still talk about the issue that, l let me paint a picture in your mind. I'm so that law, becomes, it becomes a law now, and it becomes agreeable, and I'm we say, okay, yeah, but, and then you are the landlord, and then it comes to a point where I'm supposed to pay my next month's salary, and mm -hmm. then, I mean, my next month rent, mm -hmm. and salaries are not paid. A lot of people will be on the streets. Mm -hmm. Yes, now, because the landlord will not have patience. Seven days after I leave my house, okay, I don't have time for you. <laughs> well, well, according to the state, no, <laughs> nobody's going to no, send you out of your house. No, there will. There, there, there is People actually, will. no, plans are in the offing, you know, it's going to be um, on a structured platform. But the state government says it's going to start from the formal sector because they still have uh, some issue trying to get in for more sector into all of that. Because the th what they Even are the saying, formal, what, when you say the formal sector, for what those who have about? structured salaries, you well, know, so like where the federal government, because you and the state I, government, you or you, no, you can't control <laughs> you that. that. I mean, <laughs> this is the reality. What's the reality? Salaries don't you? come very early for a lot of people. That's a uh, big issue. Uh -huh. So if you have to not pay monthly salary and then you you know you have to pay monthly rent, mm. it's a brilliant idea. Mr. Governor, uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. But you also need to understand the fact that, you know, some companies and some organizations, including the government, don't come through with the salaries. And so when it gets to that time, mm. you, or guy, you're supposed to pay your rent on the 31st. And you're not a the landlord or gala landlord. There's no money. How do you explain all of that? Mercy, you have to be coming that because one of the things the Lagos State government is actually saying is that it will actually give you in a bit of um, um, uh, an allowance so you could uh, uh, see to other business. Because most people complain of school fees and other stuff they get to pay on a monthly basis. You know, so, so although it is the right thing to do, you know, even if you have to pay your rent yearly, the right thing to do is that if you earn a salary, you take a particular amount. You just divide your sal your your rentals into twelve months. So once your salary get paid, you take um, a month of it and keep on saving. So that's how before the end of the year you have. So when you get to rent. the next month, my question is: yes. you, for instance, you have sorted for this month, and this uh -huh. is December. Yes. So you get to January. Uh, you know, and you January is over. How would you pay? Because the end of January, you, you know, know you're working with a budget. I mean, you take a little. Mm -hmm. So you're going to use. You're going to take out a percentage for transportation. Take out this for housing. For rent as Take well. out this. Yes. So right. that's a normal thing to do. No, but that's uh, that's what I'm saying yes so you you probably would say okay you're expecting salaries to drop at a particular time and yes. they don't drop then okay. you get to that month and then the, the landlord is waiting for you mm. see i a lot of people would be on the street though because the landlords first of all would not even have the joy on their faces oh what if they you people to get monthly or, rent or leave my house it's, it's already time i'm <laughs> sure i'm sure i'm sure the Lagos state government would actually perfect all of this these are concerns no but these are some of the these concerns, concerns we, we need to yes, also you know, know factor, as much as it sounds like a brilliant mm. idea but we also need to understand Mercy, i'd rather pay my rent monthly oh. Uh, you know, no, so I can do I that. So I can do that crypto work. business that one of my colleagues has been telling me about. <laughs> <laughs> we need to move away now. Away from that one. Uh, chess, 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 chess. Uh, an 18 year old uh, boy just won a chess competition. And uh, Mercy, it is really a story of, um, you know, it's not about where you're staying. It's, uh, you know, chess is the thing of. Um, the mind, you know, it, it thing of a thing of the intellect. So it doesn't matter if you actually grew up uh, or staying under the bridge, but an 18 year old, you know, just won a slum chess and mental mathematics competition. And I'm so happy for him. And he's a Nigerian. You need to add that. You, you need to just add that. You know, okay, he's a Nigerian <laughs> as well. <laughs> because yes. And he lives um, somewhere around Osho di Isale. Uh, Don't ask what Isale is. Uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so, but, but it's a brilliant one. Uh, as the truth is, I think we were having a conversation on this platform, and someone mentioned the fact that there are too many talents. Mm. We have too many talents in Nigeria. Nigerians are talented people. Mm. Nigerians are very special. But you see, you, you just need someone to discover you. And uh, yes, as much as we want to say it doesn't necessarily matter, I'm just saying that see, there are a lot of talent out there. True. And it's a very brilliant one. I'm, I'm, you know, totally to be a proud. singer. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, you could also have that kind of competition in, you know, this kind of environment yes. is really, really very brilliant and very amazing. I, I think I saw a movie. Uh, some kind of movie. So it, it's already, to some me, it feels, like it's it, it feels like it's a deja vu. It feels okay. like I've already seen this happen before mm. because I saw a film where this uh, young lad 
Uh, he wasn't really in a very good, he didn't grow up in a very good environment True. and all of that, but he was totally and, you know, very brilliant and fantastic. And then he kept on winning all of the chess competition and he was earning monies and then he was making his family proud. He took his family away from, you know, from poverty. I'm proud of him and I'm yes. sure a lot of Nigerians. But, you know, see, that, that's why I think that, you know, we need to create, the problem is not that, um, Nigerians are not very hard working or, you know, Nigerians are lazy. Just we just need the environment, mm. you know. And I'm also saying that it's high time we move away from the conventional university. We do, we have, we have so believed in the fact that you need to end, you need to get a certificate. And mm -hmm. so a lot of people now, you find that the time that you went to school and the time that I went to school is quite different now. Parties <laughs> yes. are really different. Some people just feel like, yeah. oh, you just go there and find and sort your way out. It's some persons, I mean, these are fantastic things. And I, I don't know if we do have, you know, a competition in mm. Nigeria. Do we have a, any sports where well, we project chess? Nigeria? Yes. Uh, you know, at the national level, I can't say because I don't know. I'm sure we have chess competitions, right? but congratulations so, 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 but, 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 to Adeoye for us. Yeah, congratulations to him. But I'm thinking that, you know, it's this is also an avenue where we can grow around and begin to scout for all of this talent and put them together. I, and I then agree. begin to compete, you know, at the global right. world. You know what they say about um, uh, some, some um, bad things coming from the slum, but in this uh, particular situation or scenario, it is something very good. I can proudly say that I uh, grew up, you know, from the slum. <laughs> Go a juggle. What? what? <laughs> All right. That's as much as we can take on top trending in a moment. Izzy Kenya Eto will be joining us on Off the Press. Stay with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. <laughs>